Hey folks, alright, I figure I should show you my secondary server since I showed a little bit of it in the uh, the video about getting started with a server I uh, put up not too long ago. This is the secondary server. As you can see, it doesn't have that super micro board in it anymore. I did that for the purposes of the video, but I decided on more SATA ports versus uh, server-grade hardware because that's what I really need in a junk drawer more than I need you know the hardware to be super nice so I'm using this ASRock 7070 D ASRock A770 DE plus AMD motherboard I actually have ordered a CPU for this right now it has an Athlon 2 X3 440 in it, which isn't a bad CPU, but it's overkill for a file server. So I ordered one of the low energy ones, an LE 1200, I think it was, an Athlon 64 uh, low energy one. I think it's a dual core as well. Can't quite remember, uh, but it's a 45 watt CPU, so it should do pretty well for a file server. Uh, I figure I might sell the X3 or something like that. Assuming that works in this board. I assume it will, considering it can actually handle uh, quite a bit with the 8-pin power on the motherboard. But, hey, you know. <clears throat> has 4 gigs of RAM in it. The A-Data RAM that I've had for so long. I put the, Riva, the NVIDIA RIVA TNT2 card in there so I can get a VGA output to the monitor. Which works, as you can see, even though it's a PCI card. <laughs> it's so old. It uh, has the Acbell 550 watt power supply, which has excellent protection circuitry in it. And I have four 1 terabyte drives. The two on the bottom are Ultra Stars, and the two on the top are desktop uh, grade Hitachis, or Death Stars, uh, which all these are very reliable. Uh, these two were in my old file server, whereas these two were in desktops and hard drive enclosures and stuff at one time, but now they're all together in a RAID 10. Uh, maybe I can add two one terabyte notebook drives to this for uh, so I can have six drives in RAID 10. I might just do that at some point if I need more space in the junk drawer. <laughs> However, I think it's better to put two terabyte drives in here first than to do that. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. That's probably what's going to happen. I'll eventually upgrade the storage as needed, but this is the secondary server, so it's not going to get much money put into it. So. It's running an AMD board. Should be fine. Uh, I haven't actually booted it up yet. I just put this board in and everything. Uh, so what I'll do is when that CPU comes in, I'll stick that in here, assuming it works. If not, I'll keep the Athlon X3 in there or find another dual core somewhere. I'm not sure yet, but hopefully hopefully that low energy edition of the chip works in here. I, I can't see why it wouldn't because it's a socket AM2 chip in this socket AM2, AM2+. Plus. AM3 motherboard, so it should be fine. So let's boot this thing up and actually uh, see if changing from Intel chipsets to AMD will actually work. That should be interesting. I can't see why it wouldn't, but you never know sometimes. Let's see if Linux likes it. <laughs> AHCI is turned on, as you can see. We get a beep out of the PC speaker. Um, um, I think it tried to boot Windows, <laughs> even though there's no Windows. That's weird. I don't know what the deal is there. All right, let's see what the heck is going on here. There's the boot configuration. Oh, the boot device was disabled. Wow. <laughs> How does that happen on a motherboard? What? Uh, wow, I've never seen that before. Okay. Now this little guy should boot. Server's being... Server's giving me some back sass. It's not nice. <laughs> There we go, there's Debian, so let's boot that up. It's running Debian 8, 
just like my other server. It has ButterFS RAID 10 on all four of those hard drives, just like the other one. So, you know, there you go. There you go. It works. Works just fine. Cool. No problem at all. You can swap motherboards. The only thing I have to do is change ETH1 to ETH0 uh, in the persistent net rules config file, and then it's good to go. So, there you go. I thought I'd just quickly show you this because uh, it's pretty cool. And you may ask, what's the point of this? Well, having a, a digital junk drawer is kind of a good thing uh, for backups. Uh, that way, if you need to reinstall, it, it's not such a big deal to uh, just, you know, SFTP your files over to this server, leave them there, reinstall, and drag them back afterwards. That's what I use this junk drawer for as well. Also, if I have a client that has, uh, where if I have a client's laptop or something where I have to reinstall the OS because it's just that screwed up, I can get the files off using a PC to recover them. And I can back them up to the server for safekeeping since it has RAID 10 on it. So there's redundancy behind that as well. So that that's just a couple of things I use a digital junk drawer for. It's nice to have one around. And I keep it right over there. Zoom in, zoom in. On the local network, you can see the, the router and the switch over there. So I just keep it in the corner over there. So it's directly on the network up here. So there's no, there's no like, Wi-Fi crap like with my other file server so this is good so that makes backups really fast which is nice so there you have it and I have two SATA ports to spare which is nice because I might put some notebook drives up here in that particular case so there you go that is the junk drawer server there's not much to show you it's it's really an, an exact repeat of my other file server uh, video from May from May 2015, so it's literally the same configuration. Webmin and everything is on this machine. The only difference is the size of the hard drives and the hardware I'm using. So there you have it. Hopefully that uh, low energy Athlon 64 comes in soon, so I can just use that, and it should be all good. So that was just a brief look at that. Maybe not the most interesting thing in the world, but hey, hey, it might give someone an idea. So there you have it, folks. I think before this video is done, I should at least show you guys the new chip I'm going to use in the server. What I had in here was this. This is an Athlon 2 X3. It's a tri-core CPU. It's the 440. Very good chip, actually. I really like this chip. But it's overkill for a file server, and it uses too much wattage for what I prefer. So I have stepped back to this one here. This Athlon here. The uh, It is an Athlon... It's in a socket AM2 Athlon 1600. Uh, it's one of the uh, low wattage ones, 45 watt chip. So it's much more suitable for a file server than this one, which is probably a 95 watt chip, if I had to guess. So that's socket AM3, that's socket AM2. So a bit of an age difference there. There's 2008 copyright on there, 2005. So I'm dialing it back for this file server. I'm still going to use the same cooler. This is the cooler I got with my 6000 Plus back in like 2006 or 7. This was a stock AMD cooler. Remember when they were this good? Yeah, stock AMD coolers are a fucking joke now. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna stick that uh, more power efficient chip in the uh, server and uh, it'll be good to go. I just thought I'd show you guys the chip itself. Uh, there you have it. Alright, and I booted up the machine with that new processor in it, and it seems to have accepted it just fine. It is a single core processor. I couldn't remember whether it was dual core or single core, uh, I think during the video, but it is a single core processor. It's basic, It's a step. They were also um, Semprons that were like this, but I opted for the Athlons because, for the Athlon because Semprons are just crap. Uh, for the most part. I mean, a Sempron would work in a file server like this, but when you go to change permissions on folders, it will be slow. So you want at least a pro at least a, like a Celeron for something like that, because Semprons are not good for that. Uh, but this uh, Athlon LE1600 seems to have been accepted by the computer, no problem at all. And that is a 45 watt chip, so it won't eat up the electric bill nearly at all, which which is really nice. So even with AMD, you can still get low energy stuff going. 
this is just an example of of using hardware you have and making it work. I took AMD is famous for processors that just eat power f for no good reason. <laughs> so I took the lowest energy one I could find for this board, stuck it in there. The, at least the lowest energy CPU that was still pretty decent, and stuck it in there. Um, even though the board supports like 130 watt CPUs, actually. But this is better, I think. Uh, it's got six SATA ports, so it's perfect for expanding storage a little bit. Seems great. Uh, no problems at all. I have an update. Nice. So, there you have it. Uh, that is uh, this particular server. I have Webmin on it like I do the other one. It's the same configuration, pretty much. Uh, so, you know, four gigs of RAM. That uh, Athlon processor. Seems fine to me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.